System testing is often considered one of the most important inflection points and critical success factors in any digital transformation. But what exactly is system testing and how do we apply it to our digital transformation? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And as I mentioned, system testing is one of the most important parts of a project. It's when the transformation rubber meets the road. It's where you finally see if a software is actually going to work not only from a technical perspective, but also from a business process and an organizational human perspective. So what I want to do today is talk about the different elements of system testing and talk about why it's so important and how you can deploy it effectively within your digital transformation strategy and plan. Before we jump into the different elements of system testing, it's first important to look at what are the different aspects and iterations of system testing. First of all, let's back up and talk about what is the purpose of system testing. A lot of times people think the purpose is to make sure that we've worked out all the bugs in the software. That is one of the reasons, but it's only one reason that we go through system testing and why we need to go through so many iterations of system testing. The more important thing we need to look at is to ensure that not only does the technology work technically, but does it work for our business? Does it align with our processes and our people and what we ultimately need the software to do from a requirements perspective? And that's a key component that's often overlooked in the system testing process. And quite frankly, it's why so many organizations get through system testing, think that everything looks good until they go live and realize things aren't so good. Now, some of the other components that we're looking at during system testing are going to be things like your business processes and your requirements traceability. Does this way that the software has been built, does it meet the way we expect our business processes to work? And does it meet our business requirements? Another thing we look at is what is the impact that this is going to have on the organization? How are people going to be affected differently by this new process, by this new workflow that we've defined and we've gotten to see in the system testing process? And so this is part of why documentation is so important during testing. And that's one recommendation I would make early on in this discussion is you want to make sure you have solid documentation on what the actual results were during the testing process, where the errors occur, and where the follow-up items might be tracked so that we have clear documentation as different stakeholders touch the process. So what I want to do next, though, is talk about what are those different steps in the system testing process and how might your different stakeholders and key end users and employees be involved in those system testing processes. Now, the first and most fundamental iteration of system testing is called technical unit testing. And this is really where the software developers and the techie types look at how the software has been configured and customized and make sure that an individual transaction works well. So for example, you might look at something simple like creating a purchase order. When I create a purchase order, does it capture the fields and the information I expected and what happens after I've created it? And it sort of stops there though. It doesn't go all the way through the entire end-to-end -end cycle. It's just looking at one part of the process to ensure that the software works. And so one way to think about system testing in general is that we're starting with the fundamental bits and pieces of testing and we work our way up to a more comprehensive, complete integrated view of testing. And this is that most fundamental basic testing that typically is done by your software vendor or your system integrator or whoever your really technical resources are. And once that phase is done, then we move into other phases of system testing. So the next iteration in the process is still technical, but now we're starting to introduce a business process element into the testing process. And here's where we look at the end to end business process. So rather than just looking at a purchase order in my previous example, now we're going to look at what happens after the purchase order is created, who approves the purchase order, what happens once that purchase order has been approved, how do I receive goods or inventory or services against that purchase order, and ultimately how do I pay people based on that purchase order. So that's an example of more of an end-to-end -end flow that now we need to test all the way through, primarily from a technical perspective. We're still looking at it to make sure the data is flowing correctly, the right integration points are happening, but we're, now we're doing it in more of a broad view of end-to-end -end workflows and processes rather than just one specific sub-step in the process. So that end-to-end -end process is a key step that, again, a lot of technical implementers, a lot of system integrators will overlook this or gloss over this point in the process because oftentimes they think that if they've done the technical unit testing, then the software works. But we need to know 
that not only do the units work, but the entire flow of processes work as well. So far, we've been talking about testing of a particular application. We look at the unit testing, the end-to-end -end process within one application. But there's another step now to where we need to look at what about the third-party bolt-on systems? Most organizations, if not all of them that deploy any sort of technology, have some sort of integration need. They're not deploying one technology. They're typically deploying more than one technology, or they're deploying one technology that needs to integrate with other systems. So now we need to look at how data flows and integrates between these different systems. So it's sort of like end-to-end -end testing like we talked about in the previous step, but now we're looking outside of the core system that we had been focused on up until this point. Now we're looking at the full integration of systems. So this is where reporting and data management and the overall end-to-end -end process across applications becomes so important. And oftentimes you'll find that there's breakdowns in the integration process or data is getting corrupt during the handoff between systems or it's not flowing the way it should. And those are the sorts of things that you want to work out during your integration testing. Now, the last major step in the testing process is user acceptance testing. It's also commonly known as conference room pilots. And this is where we shift from a technical focused testing to more of a business focused testing. So now your stakeholders, your business owners, your process owners, those are the people that should be leading the testing process now when we get to this phase. Now we assume that a prerequisite up until this point has been that we've gone through all those other technical pieces that I just talked about, and we've worked through the technical bugs, the technology works from a technical perspective, but now we need to shift gears and focus on does it work for our business? And those are two very different things oftentimes. So now this is where we get people from the business to walk through different scenarios and really stress testing the system to make sure not so much that the technology works, but that the processes and workflows within the system work and align with what the needs are of the business. Now, some common breakdowns or failures that happen that you want to expose during user acceptance testing are things like requirements traceability. We had 100 requirements we defined for this certain process, but we can only trace back to 80 of them. There's 20 requirements that we've identified that we have not yet addressed in our overall process and workflow. So therefore that might be a fix we need to go look at is how do we address those requirements that aren't showing up in the product that's been delivered by our technical resources. Another thing we're looking at here is what are the exceptions in our processes? What are those things that are really unique to us as an organization? Those things that might be manual workarounds or exceptions outside of our normal process. And how can we make sure we've worked through some of those scenarios so we understand how that technology can address those needs? And if they can't address the needs, then we can figure out what we're going to do about it. Are we going to change the software? Are we going to just live without being able to manage that exception within the system and revert to manual processes? Those are the types of things we want to work through. And the general theme I would say for the overall user acceptance testing and conference room pilot process is you really do want to spend time poking holes and finding problems with the system because now is a much better time to do it than once you've gone live. You don't want to be working through these issues in a, in a production environment when you're trying to run your business. So here's where you want to load as much data as you can, all your master data, as much transactional data, or at least sample transactional data, so you can work with real customers, real employees, real product master data, all that stuff. You want it to look as real as possible and be more of a simulation of what your business is going to look like day to day. Now, the biggest word of warning I can give you for user acceptance testing is, first of all, that's the most important part of testing, in my opinion. The technical stuff is important because you do need to work out the bugs, but more often than not, it leads me to my second concern, which is that more often than not, system integrators and software vendors don't spend a lot of time on user acceptance testing because it's outside the scope of what they do. Their job is to deliver to you a technology that works. Your job is to figure out and ensure that the technology works for your business. Again, those are two very different things. So you want to spend a lot of time going through multiple iterations of user acceptance testing and look at your project plan early in the strategy and planning phase to make sure you have at least three iterations where you go through all of your scenarios end to end, work through all the problems and kinks that come out of it. And then you go through it again a second time and then a third time. Generally, we find that three iterations is a good starting point. If you're a larger organization, you might actually have more than that. So Make sure you have enough time in your project plan, enough iterations, and make sure you're doing this in a way that captures documentation around how the system is going to work for your needs. And again, another important output from this is not just making sure that the processes work and that the technology works, but that we're also identifying how this is going to affect our people 
so that we can more effectively manage change through our change management strategies and tactics. So that's another secondary but very important benefit of user acceptance testing is now we have more tangible understanding of the detailed ways that people are going to be impacted and how we need to train them ultimately when we get to end user training. So I hope this has given you an overview of how systems testing works, what it is, how it fits in with your overall digital transformation. For more best practices on digital transformations like this, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report, which provides a number of best practices around implementation, software selection, change management, as well as independent software reviews and rankings as you consider different technologies for your transformation. So I've included a link to that resource below. I encourage you to check that out. And I also have included links to a number of other resources below that are meant to help you through your digital transformation journey. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.